God bless dear friends and welcome, welcome to this week's service. Here we are, Saturday, September 3rd already. We're in the month of September, uh, the Sabbath day. And I'm doing this, I'm filming this very late. It's after 10 o'clock p.m. Uh, here where it will play Sunday also. A lot of you like to attend a service on Sunday. And we have spoken about Saturday being the, the Sabbath. And I, I know that to be factual. And a lot of you, it doesn't matter what day, worship our Heavenly Father every single day. So this will play Saturday evening and uh, September 4th, Sunday. As you know, I'll be in Hamtramck all day and night tomorrow. I'm excited to taste that food, the wonderful Polish food at the uh, Hamtramck Labor Day Polish Festival. So I won't be able to come to you. I won't have internet access. And I'm going to try to make this a weekly, weekly service. And, you know, for whatever reason, a lot of you, your work schedule, maybe it's your work, you can't attend a regular uh, weekly service. Or maybe you haven't found the right church. It just doesn't seem to fit and uh, um, with your needs. Or maybe physically you are just unable to get out and attend a weekly service. And I want to bring you, uh, I bring you so much Bible prophecy, I'm a watcher, as many of you are now. You're all watching now. I'm proud of you. And I'm a watchman. I watch as Bible prophecy unfolds and pertains to current events taking place in the world today, now in these last days and last hours. But I know, I don't think, I don't believe, I know Yahweh, Father God, our Heavenly Father, has led my ministry in this direction, right here through YouTube, uh, this, this channel, where I can reach as many as possible. Bring the lost back home to the Father. Bring the lost back home through repentance of their sins, repentance of their ways, and acknowledging that Jesus conquered the grave. He arose from the grave and accepting him as our Lord and Savior in these the last days, the last hours, the last weeks. Um, so I'm going to try to do this on a regular basis. We're going to take a look today at Matthew um, chapter 6. And that's going to be uh, our focus today. The title of the sermon, are you ready? Prophets of the Lord, only prophets spelt P-R-O-F-I-T-S, and marketing your ministry. Now, we're going to open with prayer, but before we do, I'm going to um, propose a question to you. Uh, when you are in a church uh, service, and um, they pass around the, the, the basket for the collection of the tithes, the offering, in the pew right ahead of you is a white envelope where you can fill your name, address, phone number, uh, email address. Uh, do you fill that out or do you just put uh, your offering in the envelope and seal it and put it in the basket? Now, I want you to think about that all throughout this video and leave me a comment or a personal message on do you uh, fill out the offering envelope? Now, as you know, um, I am David. Uh, Zachar, I am a licensed, ordained minister in the gospel of Yeshua, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I went through a great deal of study, hard work, a great deal of scrutiny that it takes to become a licensed and ordained minister uh, and a Christian counselor. And, you know, I, I have my credentials right here. And it, it's not that easy to become an ordained minister. Okay, what did I just do there? What did I just do there, friends? I boasted on my accomplishments. I boasted on the hard work I put in, the hours and the study and the time and the scrutiny and the background checks and um, what it takes to become a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. When I should be boasting on our Heavenly Father and boasting on the good news, the good news that Jesus died on the cross at Calvary, uh, took your sins to the cross so you could have eternal life with him through salvation. Do you see where I'm going at with this? Do you see where I'm going? Okay, we're going to begin. We're going to open up with prayer. And I ask that you bow your heads and uh, pray with me. Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless this ministry, that you use me. Use me, Father God, to bring the lost back home. Use me, Father. Use me to bring the lost back home to you. 
that they may repent of their sins, repent of their ways, and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I ask that everyone viewing this service today, that they feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and a blessing fall upon their lives. This I ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Prophets of the Lord um, and marketing your ministry. Let's take a look real quick at um, Matthew chapter 6. Okay, we're going to do a little study. I lost my place. Here we go. Now, right now it's raining and storming where I'm at, where I'm bringing you this. So uh, the lightning is flashing, the thunder is cracking, so I hope I don't lose my connection. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. Let's look at that. Uh, what is Jesus telling us here? Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will not have your reward in heaven. Try not to be boastful and uh, a braggart. Now, um, this goes both ways. This goes to the, the clergy, the pastors, the ministers, and it goes to the congregation. It goes to you. Don't be boastful. Try to be humble. Try to lead a humble life. Um, listen to what the gospel has to say. And if you are a pastor, preach that word. Don't boast about yourself. Don't boast that... I'm going to... I don't know if it's still on the air... Uh, Late night with uh, David Letterman or uh, what's the other guy, uh, Jay Leno. I don't watch TV anymore. But don't say, hey, I'm going to talk about this and that. I'm going to be on the Tonight Show. That was with Johnny Carson. That's going way back. But David Letterman, you know, don't be, don't be boastful. Don't be boastful. You know, talk about, I'm going to be on a television show talking about the good news of salvation and in these end days, trying to bring as many to the Lord as I can. Just don't brag on yourself. Don't brag on yourself. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So when you give, when you give to charity, don't announce it. Don't get on the street corner and uh, sound the trumpet. Look what I did. I took my, took a day off of work and I worked all day uh, uh, feeding and clothing the needy. Don't, don't brag upon yourself. Do what you do. Do it for the Lord. And don't bring uh, attention on yourself. Okay, uh, Matthew 6, verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Go, when you want to be in prayer, go to your Heavenly Father. This is between you and Him. You don't have to draw a large attention, large crowds as you pray out loud and make sure all eyes are upon you. It is not about you. It is not about bringing attention to you. Go, when you are really in need and you want to worship and you want to pray to your Father, do it in private. Go into your prayer closet. Do it in secret. And know that your Father knows what you need before you even ask. Let's carry on. And we're going to do a discussion on... Uh, a few things. Um, let's jump ahead real quick to uh, fasting. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head 
and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You don't need to bring all the attention upon yourself. If you are fasting, you don't need to make a face like you're so hungry and you're doing this. Uh, you don't draw the attention on yourself. Uh, no one even needs to know. Only your Heavenly Father needs to know. You need to be humble. Treasures in heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Do not store up your, for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And we're going to talk about money. Now, a lot of, I see it a lot lately, right here on YouTube. Um, and it's not just ministry. It's people that are making um, videos regarding all sorts of topics. And it is a lot of work. Any of you that are um, doing videos on YouTube know it's, it's a great deal of time and effort goes into it. You don't do it usually in one take. Uh, you get halfway through a video and you start babbling uh, incoherently or it doesn't make sense, you got to start over or your dog barks or uh, your wife comes in the room or the kids are running through the house and it's very very, very time consuming and diligent hard work, but I see uh, PayPal buttons, donate buttons on the YouTube channel now, when it comes to ministry um, it is a lot of work it is a lot of work, but I um, I don't think we need to put PayPal buttons up where people can donate. I think if the ministry is serving you well um, and you have the means um, to donate, that it could be done privately in you know, a personal message. I don't think our focus on the ministry should be about marketing our ministry and money. Well, I gotta you know, and, and I always say that about selling items uh, on our channels too, and I. I we don't need to market the word. We need to deliver the word freely. It is a lot of work. And I think if, if the message benefits you, if the ministry benefits you, then if you are able to give, it should be done freely. It shouldn't be pressure. It shouldn't be... Uh, we shouldn't focus our ministry on financial gain. Uh, the gospel should be um, delivered freely. Uh, the word of salvation and it is a lot of work but I, I kind of frown on um, PayPal buttons up on your um, YouTube channel now, if you have a website and you have a PayPal button that may be okay but don't make the focus um, it does take a lot to do this but I wouldn't focus on the marketing aspect we have ministers today and um, evangelists they're flying in and what's your opinion? They're flying in private jets around the world with bodyguards, and they're staying in the most luxurious um, presidential suites, and um, they're driving the finest of cars and living in mansions. And um, couldn't that money be better spent uh, on the homeless, on the hungry, on the needy, the, the starving children in Somalia? Uh, the... Um, people that are struck with the floods and the, the devastation of the earthquakes and, and, and now we had uh, um, her, the Hurricane Irene and putting money into that effort and living that type of lifestyle should a pastor, I, I believe a minister of the gospel should be humble and live a humble lifestyle the main point is the focus I don't think should be on um, the marketing aspect of the ministry don't brag that uh, Look what I've done. Um, Bible prophecy. Uh, I'm going to be on uh, David Letterman's show. It shouldn't be. I'm going to be on David Letterman's show to bring as many people to the Word, to the Lord, 
and bring them the word of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't think the attention should be focused on us. And we have prophets that prophesy. And I'm going to touch on that. Um, they, and I don't want to mention names. I do want to do a, a video on this later, though. Uh, whether the Lord spoke to them, and there's going to be a major, major, major earthquake, and it's going to come on people of fair skin. And then we have a, a an earthquake happen, but it's not like a 9.0, not like Japan. And then all of a sudden, prophecy fulfilled. And I think that's wrong. We're drawing attention to ourselves. And um, what is your opinion on that? What is your opinion on? Uh, kind of um, making prophecy work and we're booked in advance for the next six months and we're getting quite a, a, a good paycheck so that's what today's sermon is about leave me comments and did you fill out that envelope or, or did you just uh, put your offering in and uh, anonymously because only your heavenly father knows and what do you think about um, um your YouTube ministry uh, being profitable and should PayPal buttons be on websites even those that are for um, uh, bringing you news and uh, things about harp and um, uh, conspiracies and, and trying to profit from your YouTube channel food for thought leave me comments I love you God bless you and I'll be in ham tramming tomorrow and I'll be thinking about you with pierogies and Stuffed cabbage. Mm. I love you so much.